Yo, what's going on guys? Clutch back again with another video for you guys and today is going to be another tactics video. Before we do get into it, if you haven't already, please smash that like button. We are trying to reach 25 likes on the video today, so please do if you could. If you haven't already as well, drop a comment if you have any questions at all and please smash that sub button. We are trying to reach 5,000 subscribers before Christmas. We're about 130 away, so anyone who does would be massively, massively appreciated. If you want to win every game like me, visit MMO EXP's link in the description to get the cheapest and safest coins on FC24 and use code CLUTCH at checkout for 5% off. So guys, it is another tactics video and it is going to be the 352. Uh, 352 is actually one of my more enjoyable fade formations to use this year. It's actually quite a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm super excited to show you guys this one. So, uh, defensive style is unbalanced for me. I don't personally like to use any pressing tactics or anything like that. Especially with a three or a five back. I just find the pressing tactics make your players kind of run around a bit weird. Half the time they just move around like headless chickens anyway. They don't really know where they're going half the time. And for me... Just making sure to not use that press tactic and just stay on balance means that I get the best control out of my team. Now, the width is on 45. This is basically just to make sure those, those centre-backs do ever so slightly tuck in. And when we are defending and those left mid, right mid do come back and help defend, we can basically just make them sure they're a little bit narrower, make sure there aren't as many gaps in the team, and just basically try and be as defensively sound as possible. Uh, now, the depth is on 50. For me, 50 depth is actually a pretty pretty solid one for the 3-5-2. I don't want people basically abusing through balls, running in behind and things like that. I want it to be as defensively strong as possible. Make sure we don't concede any silly through balls or anything like that. And like I said, just, just basically make sure we don't concede as many goals. Now, build-up play is on long ball. Um, for some of you that don't know what long ball does, basically your players make in-behind runs earlier and they basically run into the space from further distances away from the ball. Uh, for me, this actually works pretty well with the 3-5-2 where you have such a wide line of players with the left mid, right mid, cam and two strikers. It does mean you have a lot of players running often enough. They won't have enough options to actually track all the runners and you'll usually be able to find a through ball on. And a lot of the time as well, uh, you'll basically be able to play a long switch over from, say, the right centre-back all the way to the left mid. Left centre-back to the right mid, DMs to the left mid, right mids. They stay out wide. They basically hug, basically hug those pylons lines and be as just annoying as possible. Just give us as many out balls. A great way to build up play as well. Now, direct passing as well. If you don't know what direct passing does, what it does basically makes your players make better in behind runs, especially if they have high sprint speed, acceleration, and attacking positioning. Uh, now, for a lot of you guys that may not play the game a lot, through balls are absolutely busted, whether it be just normal through balls, precision through balls, threaded through balls over the top ones. It's basically the best way to score on this game, especially against some of the lower level players. They don't just quite track the runners well enough and they probably can't play a switch well enough to really defend it. And direct passing is the absolute key to it. With what it with it helping players make in behind runs, especially have, if you have these elite attackers and maybe have a five star weak foot, skill moves as well, alongside the pace and the shooting, it can be an absolute destructive force against some of these lower level players. Now, the width is on 45. This is just to make sure that when basically my wingers are out wide, I do want them to ever so slightly just be a little bit narrower to start with. Often enough, I find if you don't have them on 45 width, they basically just hug the actual like the byline, which isn't necessarily a bad thing at times. But for me, especially if I am attacking, a lot of the time I want those wingers to be just move a little bit narrower just to basically give us an extra option or two. We all have a lot of options anyway, but it's just me probably being a little bit nitpicky. So, yeah. Now, players in the box is on six. For me, players in the box six is actually the best on the game. I do use seven at times, depending on how attacking I'm trying to be. But for me, six is the absolute best. I'm basically just trying to make sure the strikers get involved, the cam, the left mid, right mid. I might get a late run from one of the DMs as well. We do just want as many bodies available in and around that box to try and help us score goals. And then I do have corners and free kicks, but very low. I have corners on two, free kicks on one. This is basically just to make sure we do not concede counter-attacks. For me, it's my absolute pet peeve. I absolutely hate it. Um, so yeah, just to make sure we don't concede any silly goals from basically getting counter-attacked off of a set piece. Now guys, we are gonna move on to the instructions. This is how I do have my team laid out. Pretty self-explanatory there. And these are the instructions. So. 
I do have both of my strikers on stage central getting behind. I have both of them in the central areas of the pitch just to make sure they can make those better in behind runs, especially with using long ball and direct passing. We want them making those through ball runs as often as possible and having them on stage central does that. And also having them on getting behind does just ensure that they already start their runs early, making sure that they're ready for those through balls to come through and just be as aggressive as we can. Now, our cam is on stay for we're getting to the box across. This is for two reasons. One of them is because we do just want him in the best attacking position possible. He's almost going to play like a Lampard style where he'll, he'll actually run almost past the strikers at times and basically play as a striker there and run through and try and score goals. We just want him in those best attacking positions, stringing the whole play together. Having him just behind those strikers does mean that the wingers can cut in behind him. It means that the, the forwards can just bomb, bomb ahead of him and he can just control that middle of the pitch. You build up the play through the cams. It works so well. Also, there is a bit of a bug in the game as well where your CDM and your cam do swap positions if you don't have them on stay forward. So it does just also just avoid that because it can be super, super annoying. Also, we do have him on getting to the box across again to kind of play that role as I explained a minute ago about the Lampard role where basically just making sure he gets into those attacking areas basically overlapping the strikers and trying to get in those great attacking positions it can work so well a lot of players aren't ready for it and uh i absolutely love it so i do have one of my cdms on stay about one attacking cover center and i have the other just on cover center so i do have the one on cover set uh, just on cover center just so he can be the one that maybe just ever so slightly drifts up the pitch and helps our attackers you know build up the play move the ball around just make sure we don't lose the ball in any silly positions Sometimes if you have both on stay but while attacking and you don't have one of them just on balance, it often means that those five almost get stuck on one part of the pitch and the other five get stuck behind them and it can be quite hard to recycle the play and just build up again. So for me, having that little middle man in between does often mean that I can have that extra pass, maybe if I need to recycle the ball and just play the right way. And then I do obviously have one of my guys on stay but while attacking cover centre. This guy will generally be your proper DM, the one who's going to sit back and help protect your back line and make sure you don't concede any silly goals. Now, I do have both of my wingers on come back on defence, stay wide, get in behind, get into the box across. Now, I do have both of them on come back on defence to make sure that they do help out defensively. So when we are defending, I do want it to work as a five-back formation and for them to sit back and help protect our back line, play as wing backs and make sure we don't concede any goals in those wider areas. They will still bomb on, though. A lot of people think because they're on comeback on defence that they're just going to sit back and defend. But you would be wrong. They will still bomb forward. We do have both on stay wide. Now, generally, when I have left mid, right mid, I would have them on cut inside. But there is such a huge advantage to having width with the 3-5-2 where we have so many bodies in central areas that having those left mid, right mids out wide, it, it just spreads the pitch open so much. It means that the other team can't just sit in the middle and just block out your all your players. Also, as well, it's such a good switch option, like I explained earlier in the tactics. There's so many good passes on. So just having them on stay wide gives you a lot of great options that way. Now, I do have both on getting behind as well. Again, this is just to make sure we get basically use the three balls to the best of our ability and try and score as many goals that way. And also just make sure, again, we are just staying wide and being as much of a pain as possible to our opponents. And then we do have both on getting to the box across. So if we do get into those final third areas where we are trying to be dangerous... They can be available for back post crosses, cutbacks, and things like that. And then we do have everyone else simply on default instructions. So yeah, guys, if you did like this video, please drop a like. We're trying to hit 50 likes on this video. If you haven't as well, please smash that sub button. It'll be massively, massively appreciated. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.